So the moment that I found out that Solar Guitars had a budget line coming out called S, I had to have one. This is the TB4.61C, better known as a pointy Telecaster. So in this video, we're going to be taking a closer look at this guitar, doing an in-depth review, unboxing, and finding out whether or not it's worth your time and effort and money. So let's go ahead and dive in to the unboxing. All right, so here it is, as it arrived, came all the way from Spain to the east coast of the States. You know, it's got a little bit of UPS rash on it, which, you know, given how far it traveled, is to kind of be expected. One thing that was a little unnerving is this side, you know, all of the staples were popped out and the tape was popped, but thankfully, it appears that the staples on this side held up. So let's go ahead and get it unboxed. Surprise, another box. Double box is always a very good thing, particularly when we consider how far this guitar has traveled. All right, from this view, you can see there's foam pretty much protecting the most important sides of the guitar coming all the way up to cover the top of the headstock. So that is just gorgeous. Take a look at this oh, pointy goodness. I'm gonna hold it back a little bit so the camera's in focus. It's got a clear plastic sheet over the uh, pick guard there. And I am really excited to get this demo going. So this is the S by Solar Guitars. It's the TB4.61C, essentially a Telecaster shape. If you're familiar with Solar Guitars, you probably recognize that for the most part, they're premium instruments. This is essentially a stripped down version of that using different hardware and woods. But to be fair, that doesn't necessarily make it a bad thing. We've seen companies like Fender and Gibson come up with budget lines such as Squire and Epiphone and have some success and some pretty good instruments at that. So there's no reason to think that Solar can't do the same thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a closer look at the specifications to this guitar and then I'm gonna go ahead and get into playing it, give you an idea of what it sounds like. All right, so first and foremost, these instruments are made in China. Again, budget instrument, pretty much what you can expect from that. The body itself is poplar. The bridge is just a flat standard bridge. Nothing really jumps out or stands out at you. The pickup, it's a single humbucker that is a high output humbucker. I can attest to that. And the pickup itself is actually pretty good, but it is unbranded. It's not like, you know, Duncan design or anything like that. It's an unbranded pickup. The pick guard is single ply. It, it looks pretty good for what it is. I can't really complain. The neck is actually maple with a solar C shape and really the best way I could define that is it's somewhere between thick and thin, really kind of medium, right? It's the type of neck that I would expect on a rhythm, uh, a, an instrument that's tailored to a rhythm guitar style. I actually really liked it on this instrument. Also, this guitar is indeed a bolt-on neck. It has five screws which hold this on. It's a little bit unique, I suppose. I have seen both uh, Sterling guitars and the Schecter over my shoulder here, the CR6, that has five screws as well. I'm not really sure the benefit of that. If you guys know, I would love to hear it. By all means, leave it in the comments for those who are wondering. Not sure what the benefit of this is, but there are five screws with this bolt-on neck. The fretboard material itself on uh, the S by Solar site is listed as black tech wood. I'm not sure exactly what that is, so I had to do a little bit of research to find out. And I couldn't find anything on black tech wood. I think they might have actually had this a little bit wrong in their verbiage, because what I did find was black wood tech. And what this is, according to a few different websites that I found, this black wood tech is technologically modified wood that exhibits the properties and appearance of African ebony or Indian rosewood. And I think that's a pretty fair assessment of what is on this particular guitar here. But if you happen to know or you know a little bit more about this, please feel free to chime in in the comments. The frets are unfortunately nickel. You know, stainless would have been nice, but it's a budget instrument. It is 24 frets, which is awesome. That's what I would hope for. Uh, you know, you do miss out on the really cool Solar inlay that they put on the 12th fret. You basically just have your typical dots for markers here. But one of the more important things, to me at least for a rhythm uh, guitar, is that it is a 25.5 scale. It does come set up in E standard for the record, and the nut is, again, nothing special. Uh, just a basic plastic nut. And I would expect to probably have to file that out a little bit if you're going to go to a heavier gauge string, which is something that I plan to do. I left the stock strings on here uh, for the purpose of this review, 
but I definitely plan to go with a heavier gauge string and I would presume that that's going to have to be filed to make that work. And lastly, the tuners are just a closed machine tuner. Nothing special about them at all. Not locking, unfortunately. Try to get you a little bit better look there at them. But nothing special on the tuner front. The headstock to me is actually a pretty killer shape. I know some folks may not care for it, but I kind of like the aggressive design. And I think it goes well with the overall kind of motif of this guitar. So I'm gonna go ahead and fire it up, give you an idea of how it sounds, play through a few different sounds, clean tone, distortion, you know, obviously <laughs> no switch. So it, it'll be a simpler demo, but it'll give you an idea of what you can expect and how this guitar sounds. <laughs> Right, so this guitar really struggles to stay in tune in C standard. You know, to be fair, it comes set up, in, you know, in a standard E. So, you know, it really needs a complete setup. And if it isn't overly obvious, I don't play in C standard a lot. But what I would do would probably be get a thicker gauge string, uh, probably slot the nut a little bit for that thicker gauge string. Um, the plan for me is to replace these tuners as it is anyway. I would replace those and I would probably lower this pickup just a tad because it's so hot that um, that lower tuning really kind of becomes muddled. Now, you know what riff I really love is that one riff in the Four Horsemen that's behind that first solo that... Ah, love that riff. So even though this is marketed as a rhythm monster, what I will tell you is it does actually still have a pretty good lead tone. You'll have to excuse my playing because I am in incredibly out of playing shape for uh, playing any type of real lead. So that kind of is what it is. A lot going on in life. And I think we all know sometimes practice. Yeah, yeah, I know. So anyway, but harmonics do absolutely just jump right off of this guitar. And a lot of that has to do, you know, obviously a high output pickup, but... <laughs> Very good sustain, too. I mean, that, that's pretty awesome for a guitar that's under 300 bucks. So I'm just going to do a quick demo of the clean channel with this pickup to give you an idea how it sounds without distortion. Now one thing you can do since there isn't a neck pickup, if you want to get a little bit of a warmer tone, you can just play strum closer to the neck and that will kind of help. You can kind of notice a the difference there. So that's one way to compensate for not having a neck pickup. So let's talk about the pros and the cons of this guitar, starting with the pros. And the first pro to this guitar has got to obviously be the price, right? At the time of this video, this guitar retails for $249.99. 
and even to get shipped to my door, the East Coast of the U.S., the total for the guitar was $278. If I'm being perfectly honest with you, that is a fantastic value for what you get, and I think you'd be pretty hard-pressed to find something better at that price point. So the second thing I really liked about this guitar was the pickup. It's a high-output ceramic pickup, and while it isn't branded, I thought it sounded fantastic for what it is. In fact, it's caused me to kind of rethink modding it out, because the initial plan was to take this guitar, drop something active in it, but if I'm being honest with you, I actually really liked the sound of this pickup, and I'm thinking I'm probably going to leave it. For most people watching this, I think you will play this, particularly, you know, if you're into metal, you're going to play this guitar, and you're going to hear it. You're going to go, you know what, this thing sounds really good, and I don't really see a need to mod it out. The third pro to this guitar was definitely the playability. Right out of the box, this guitar felt really good in my hands, and the setup was what I would say good enough. Although the action was a tad high for my liking, I think for most people that's probably the sweet spot. I happen to like it really low. And, you know, keeping it just a little bit higher prevents the fret buzz and whatnot. Like I said, I'll probably make a couple of minor tweaks, but I think for most folks, right out of the box, very good. And the fourth pro to this guitar has got to be the styling, right? Like, let's be real, this guitar looks really awesome. Like, it is a, to me, it's a cool looking guitar. I love the just the overall, like like I said, the motif of the instrument, you know, it's sharp, it's pointy, it's kind of a unique metal take on the Telecaster. And finally, pro number five has got to be the fret ends. One of the big problems with budget instruments is oftentimes they don't finish the fret ends, leaving them sharp and, quite honestly, uncomfortable to play. Thankfully, the fret ends on this guitar are really smooth and there's really no need to do any more work to them. And now for the cons to this guitar, unfortunately, it's not all sunshine and rainbows. It never is, particularly with a budget instrument. And there's definitely some cons to this instrument that you should be aware of before you purchase one. Starting with the first con, and that is, of course, finish blemishes. And I say, of course, because most budget instruments have these types of finish blemishes. This guitar was unfortunately no exception. Uh, most of the blemishes were very small and almost even hard to pick up with the camera here, but there was one blemish that really kind of stands out on the top of the guitar. Outside of direct light on it, you'll probably never notice it, but I figured I'd mention it because I know there are some people who are definitely bothered by these types of blemishes. And it's important to know what you're getting before you get it. So. Definitely one of the cons to this guitar is a few finished blemishes. Number two, the pot is a little bit scratchy. The pot does not affect the sound in any way, but when you turn the knob itself, you can actually hear kind of a scratchy sound coming from the knob. And that usually kind of tells me that that pot is not really gonna last all that long. Replacing a pot isn't a huge thing, but you know, I just kind of feel like that pot is not going to last in the long run. The third con is going to be the tuners. The tuners are definitely a weak spot on this guitar. You know, I felt like I had to tune the guitar a little more frequently than I do some of the guitars where I have nicer tuners on them. I like this guitar a lot, and I'm definitely going to play it frequently. And since I'm going to be doing that, I already know I'm going to want to replace those tuners. The last con to this guitar, and this is a simple fix, but I just feel obligated to mention it, is that the frets need polishing. Once again, a typical budget instrument problem and something that's very simple to fix. And if you've never done it, I do have a video on this, which I will link in the description down below to give you an idea of how to do this. Really, all it costs you is about five to $10 in supplies and your time. So who is this guitar for? This guitar is really for anyone who loves metal, in particular, rhythm guitar players. It would make for an excellent guitar for beginners or intermediate players alike, particularly if you enjoy modding out instruments. This guitar would make for a great modding platform because it's got good bones. This would also be a great guitar for any gigging musician who doesn't want to drag out some of their nicer equipment and risk it getting damaged or stolen. With that said, who is this guitar not for? This guitar is not for anyone who is looking for a high-end instrument. Because it's not. It's a budget guitar, and you have to approach it as such. If you understand the limitations of budget instruments, this guitar will be great for you. And if you're not into hard rock or metal, and you just kind of stumbled across these guitars somehow, and you're kind of, you know, interested in them, it may not be the guitar for you. Ultimately, the verdict on this is that I really like this guitar. I probably put close to about 20 hours on it now between playing, jamming on it, and just recording tracks for this. And listen, this guitar is not without its flaws, but if I'm being perfectly honest, I really like the way this guitar plays. And maybe it's because I'm more of a rhythm guitar player, and of course I love metal. 
Um, so that's probably a big part of it. But this guitar just feels really comfortable in my hands, and I love a Telecaster shape. And I also thought it sounded great. I thought I was going to be a little bit, I don't know, annoyed by the lack of a neck pickup. But it really didn't bother me at all. At the price point and what you pay for this guitar, I kind of feel like if you're into this type of music and you're into this type of style, this is going to be a guitar that you're probably going to really like. Keep in mind, this is just one instrument and one man's opinion. I may very well have gotten the best instrument that is coming off of their assembly line, and I certainly could have gotten their worst. So take my opinion for what it's worth. Your mileage may vary. And if you enjoyed the video, please be sure to sub the channel because that does always help me out. And I appreciate all the support. If you're curious about some other budget instruments, be sure to check out this playlist right here where I've got reviews of some other guitars that are budget that you may find interesting. As always, if you have any questions, be sure to leave a comment and thanks for watching.